Welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. You will also get a chance to go beyond the lyrics with the artist to get the God experience revealed in their journey. I'm Denise Graves, and on today's show, we will feature John Michael Talbot. At the age of 15, he and his brother Terry formed the successful country folk rock group called Mason Prophet. They were swept up in the Jesus movement, but John followed a slightly different path while studying the life of St. Francis of Assisi. He created many projects for Sparrow Records. Let's take a listen to this unique troubadour. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. And my spirit Yet the Creator 
center of all. Within flesh yet not enclosed, incarnate and transcendent, consumed by all yet not destroyed. Received by all and adored In remembrance of me This is my body In remembrance of me This is my blood Whoever eats all this bread and drinks this cup of salvation shall not die but shall live, shall live forever, shall not die but shall live. I'll live forever. Today, John continues to be a force with his ministry to many around the country in concert and ministry in many Catholic parishes across the U.S. He heads a ministry in Arkansas called the Brothers and Sisters of Charity. Recently, Tom Hollis interviewed this fascinating man of God. John Michael Talbot, it's so good to have you here. Tell me. Great to be. I mean, I, I, I'm just. You're I, Tom, right? I am Tom, All yes. Right. Okay. And, uh, so you grew up in a musical family or did you, you, at a very early age, you began with a banjo, I understand. Oh yeah, I started playing banjo when I was eight years old. Okay. First of all, I was brought up as a Methodist. All right. So. You know, I come from a long line of Methodist preachers and singers, so I'm kind of, I come by this honestly. I'm kind of doing what, what they did. Yeah. So um, uh, anyway, I started playing banjo when I was eight. I had some great teachers, guys that studied under national champions, ended up playing with guys like Earl Scruggs and stuff wow. like that. So I got good quick, started playing professionally when I was 10. When I was 12, the Beatles came to America, that little band from Britain. Yeah, I think and we I've all, heard of that. Yeah, we yes. all traded in our, uh, you know, our, our acoustic instruments for electric guitars. We, got, went, we moved up to Indiana, and there were about three or 400 bands in the Battle of the Bands at the Indiana okay. State Fair that year. And I think we, we got first place, so we got a record contract, got to go to Chicago to Universal Studios and make wow. a record. We were big in about three counties. <laughs> then in 1967, the birds come along. They put country music together with rock and roll, and country rock is born. So our producer says, you guys try it. So we put together a little band called Mason Prophet. We right. ended up doing five records, ended up with Warner Brothers. We were one of those almost famous bands, mm -hmm. which meant that we played with everybody. Never played with Hendrix or The Who or The Beatles or The Stones. Never played with Dylan, but we played with just about everybody else. And what I discovered very early was all the guys I looked up to, all the gals, I remember Janice, that I looked up to, they, they were great people, but they weren't very happy. So I said, well, there's got to be more. So I started studying. I started praying. Uh, you know, I, I read reading about philosophy and religion and in China. Yeah, it was, you went on quite a journey, didn't you? Yeah, Taoism, uh, Confucianism from China, India. It was Buddhism and what we call Hinduism. They don't call it Hinduism. Then in the Middle East, I loved reading the mystical traditions, the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah tradition from Judaism, mm -hmm. uh, Sufis from, from Islam. I was reading the Greek philosophers, liked what I read. <clears throat> but I was also reading that little revised standard Bible that my grandma had given me. Your Methodist grandma gave yeah. you a Bible. That's And awesome. those red letters, Tom, they were <laughs> yeah. jumping out. Yeah. So I said, wow, what's this about? So I started praying. God, who are you? He, is she, or an it. I prayed for a year and a half. No answer. I think a lot of folks out here listening to us probably pray, and you don't get any answers either. So, so God is waiting for just the right time. Yeah. He knew me, but he knows us better than we know ourselves. So he, he, he waited. After a year and a half praying every day, reading the Bible every day, nothing. I finally had an experience with Jesus, and Jesus became a personal encounter. See, this is what Pope Francis is calling us to right now. He says, I invite all Christians 
everywhere at this very moment to a renewed personal encounter with Jesus Christ. Well, that's what it is, isn't that's it? That's all it is. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. not, it's, not, yeah. uh, it's not religion, it's, it's that relationship. It's that, that thing that is, is, is uh, every day, yeah. it's something that we well, wake religion, up and he's Religion there. is not a bad thing no. unless it's done badly. See, God gives us religion, it's a gift, but religion is given to us as a gift to lead us back to Him. And when we make a God out of religion, we miss God by misusing the things of God. So what I'm all about, what the Catholic Church is really at the core all mm -hmm. about, is all these things that we do, well, they're good, but they're like roadmaps. And we get so obsessed about the roadmap, we miss the turnoff. So we got, we got to pay attention and take the turnoff. What's that turnoff? That encounter with Jesus in the Word of God, in the sacraments, in our worship and praise, in our communion with each other, with our outreach to the whole world to bring the joy of the gospel to the whole world. See, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So a lot of Catholics are kind of shocked to find out that that's what their faith is about. <laughs> but that's indeed what our faith is all about, is to have that right. personal encounter with Jesus Christ. Your faith journey, you began to, to just investigate as a Christian now, as a, a born again believer, you began to investigate even deeper into what, the, what this journey really was supposed to be like. You know, I became a Christian in 71, ended up making couple of records with a new record company called Sparrow. Billy Ray and Hearn, God rest his soul, he just passed away. Okay. And uh, Billy Ray founded Sparrow. And I'd go out and I'd find, I'd go to a church in Pittsburgh, be a Protestant church, and get along great, go to a church. Let's say I go over to Canton, Ohio, mm -hmm. do a church in Canton, Ohio, get along great. But they wouldn't fellowship with each other. They disagree. So I said, what? What's the key? So I discovered that the scriptures were given to us by God through the early church. So if there's a if there's a debatable passage of Scripture that's dividing you and me, mm -hmm. we're good people, we have the Spirit, you know, we love Jesus, we go to the Bible, mm -hmm. what's dividing us? So I said, let's go back to the early church. I was utterly shocked when I found out that the primitive expression of what today we call the Catholic faith mm -hmm. is right there in the early church. And Tom, I didn't want to be a Catholic. <laughs> I wasn't looking, I didn't even like Catholics. And now I'm still working on that one. <laughs> And the Lord gave me a word. He says, John Michael, she's my first church. I love her most dearly. I'm going I'm to heal her and raise her up to new life again, and I want you to be a part of her. So I said, amen. And so in 1978, I became a Catholic. And I thought, well, I'm done in Christian music. And I did one last record called The Lord's Supper. It was my swan song. We didn't think it was going to sell. Well, it ended up being the biggest record in Christian music wow. that year. So I yeah. kept doing in Christian music. I've done 54 recordings you know, five plus platinum sales, I don't know, 27 books, TV show. I'm having well, a blast. The Lord's got you doing a few I'm things. Having a, I'm having a blast, <laughs> Tom. I am having a blast. It is, it is awesome to, to see what God's doing and what God's uh, leading you into. We're going we're gonna to take a break. We'll be, we'll be right back with more from John Michael Tell. What message are you bringing to the church right now? Well, I, I mean, right now, what I, I'm putting together a thing called the Catholic Revive Rally. Okay. And it's bringing together the A team, about four main speakers and singers, bringing their A game for a four hour segment to major dioceses all across America. And then I'm going to parishes by myself and sometimes teaming up with some other guys doing a parish revival. See, this whole notion, we, America needs revival. Yeah, uh, we yeah. need revival now. We're at a Nineveh moment. We can either repent and prosper, or we can not repent. We're going to perish. Now, what I mean by perish, it doesn't mean that the country's going to go away, but we're going to become something radically other mm -hmm. than what we were founded to become. We will become kind of another Western European type country. Kind of post-Christian. Well, the deal is, is we have in our lifetime, and God help me, I mean, my generation was part of it. We've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. And essentially, we've shifted from a Judeo-Christian, moral-based country. There were a lot of hypocrites. A lot of us didn't live up to it, but at least the base was there. Mm -hmm. Now we've shifted to a secular humanist base. It's happened in our lifetime. We can moan about it. We can judge people. We can get upset. We can do all this. or we, You can curse the darkness, or you can light a candle. So what we're out doing is we're preaching revival and lighting a candle. We're calling people back 
to that personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And in, in parishes, Catholic parishes where I tend to go, I share my testimony mm -hmm. and sing a lot. And the second night we, we go through a, a, a devotion called the Jesus Prayer, okay. which is an uh, Eastern Christian uh, devotion similar to the Rosary, the Marian Rosary in the West. Now, the thing is, most of your listeners are here in Pittsburgh or around the country. Most of us are Western Christians. But we forget that the church came from the East, right. came from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge segment of Christians that are Eastern Christians. So we do the Jesus Prayer to bring people back in their private prayer to that personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And in the fifth century, St. Diodocus of Photiki, and then a little later, St. Hesychius the priest, said to unite the name of Jesus with every breath you take. Wow. So, and the word for spirit in Hebrew, ruah, breath. In Greek, pneuma, no, right. means air, wind, and breath. So we can unite our breathing with the breath, the spirit of God. So you breathe in all that's good and wonderful in Jesus. In the words, Lord, Jesus, Christ, Son of God, the whole of our faith, I do books and teachings on this. Everything is there in those words. And then you breathe out anything that's standing between you in the full communion with Jesus and, because communion means common union. We don't just have union, we have communion, right. common union. So what's standing between you and me? There's, there's struggles. The church has as many people struggling with things like depression, things like purpose. What, what am I here for? Even after they, they know Christ, there's struggles like that. What do you, what do you think is, is, is the path to go down to begin to, oh, to find it's, out what the answers to those questions well, are? Well, it's so simple, it's difficult. And it's the cross. See, when I'm still trying to hang on to me, even under the name of Jesus, and I do this, so do you, we all do. When the old self tries to rear its little ugly head and get things back in Jesus' name, then we experience frustration, then we experience anger, then we experience bitterness, then we experience listlessness or boredom, kind of, what am I here for? Mm -hmm. But when you die to yourself every day, every morning, wake up and say, what do I want? I want to let go of my old self. I want to be born again this day, every day, every breath in Jesus. And now, how can a day be boring when whatever I'm doing today, mm -hmm. I don't care whether you're mowing the grass or preaching to millions, whatever you're doing, you know, I'm, I get to be like Jesus today. How can that be boring? That doesn't sound boring to me yeah. at all. See, see, and here's the deal. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. Wow. wow. See, God is on a rescue. He came to earth 2,000 years from eternity. That's not before time or after. That is outside of time. He knew every joy, every sorrow, every tragedy, every triumph, every tear, every laughter, every success, every... He knew my life. St. Augustine says he's closer to us than we are to ourself, and he knows us better than we know ourselves. So God knew me. God knew this day, this taping, this conversation Absolutely. from eternity, and he came from heaven to earth and died on a cross for me. It's not just theology or an ideology. It's an encounter with Jesus. We Catholics believe that this is sacramentally extended to us in every Eucharist. How can we, how can we go to Mass or go to the Divine Liturgy and be bored? Mm -hmm. No. Whew. Jesus is showing up here yeah. in word, in sacrament, in worship. Jesus is showing up right here for me today. It's personal. Folks, it's intimate. It's life-changing. What you're talking about is it's new life every, every day. day. New life. Every Resurrection. Day. <laughs> John Michael Talbot, thank you so much for thank being you, with Thank you, Tom. Us. It's been a joy. Take all my freedom, my life.
For joining us for more than a song. We would love to hear from you. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us for prayer and we will agree with you for God to move in your life. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the new song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week. Christ has no body now but yours.